Hello and uh, welcome to this tutorial on how to transform 3D data using Aviso. Aviso is my preferred 3D visualization and analysis package uh, simply because the user interface is uh, uh, very intuitive uh, and you can do things reasonably quickly compared to other packages. Uh, but there are uh, open source options available obviously for doing the same thing uh, and you can see my uh, equivalent tutorial on how to transform volumes using a 3D slicer uh, to achieve the same sort of result. Um, but let's press on. Uh, so I've loaded uh, this tutorial data set uh, into Aviso. Uh, as you can see it's a turtle data set um, and uh, we'll be transforming it onto a new orientation. And uh, the reason we might want to do this uh, is because uh, when we acquire images using various uh, imaging modalities, uh, the orientation of the data can be uh, non-optimal. And so we might want to re-slice it uh, according to, for example, uh, the anatomy of the object. Uh, the turtle has a bilateral symmetry to it and we might want to section it along the sagittal um, and the coronal and the axial planes, for example. So um, I've pulled the data in to Aviso and uh, we're going to attach a volume renderer as a first step so we can actually see the data. Uh, and if we adjust uh, the <coughs> color map, uh, we can start to see the turtle in three dimensions there. Okay, so we move that around, we can see the head quite nicely. Uh, we just need to have an impression of it so we can tell um, what the orientation is. And uh, as you can see, it's, um, it's pointing in a bit of an unusual direction off axis to uh, this ortho slice, this ortho orthogonal slice. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add the axes. So we're going to go to View, Axes. Okay, which brings up the global axis and as you can see uh, this particular data uh, is sitting in this orientation it was scanned sort of head down in a tube uh, for x-ray CT and um, it's uh, a little bit off axis relative to those global axes. The other thing that really helps is uh, to change it from perspective mode to orthographic mode uh, so you can see we have this perspective view here. If I click on the little eye icon, it'll change it to orthographic mode. And then if we use these uh, various X, Y, X, Z and Y, Z uh, buttons, we can flip between the various uh, views uh, to see where the data is sitting. Uh, looking exactly down these uh, various uh, lines in the X, Y and Z. Okay, so transforming the data in Aviso is reasonably straightforward. Uh, we simply click on the data module and then we click on the transform editor which is sitting down here in the properties box and so here we have uh, the transform editor activated. Uh, there are various uh, modes so you can use the transformer, uh, you can use uh, trackballs for example and various other ways uh, to manipulate the sample. And so what we're going to do is essentially use these manipulators to um, alter the position of the image. Now by default I would normally use uh, the blue Z direction as up so I'm going to rotate the head into the up direction. If I press the escape key I can toggle to this pointer uh, where I can start to actually interact with these draggers and I'm going to move the head in this orientation like so. I'm then going to change view uh, so we're looking down the uh, x-axis in this case and again uh, just be careful when you click on um, uh, one of these green uh, toggles uh, and this box is in front of it uh, you'll get the translate option so yeah I might want to use the bottom one here instead and just rotate the sample uh, into a more meaningful orientation. You can do this using slices as well so I can get rid of the volume render and just rely solely on the slice information uh, so that's another option to do it. But let's just keep uh, working with the 3D view 
so now looking straight down again and you just have to keep uh, moving backwards and forwards basically uh, to get the result that you're after and so I'm just moving between the three different angles uh, three different views uh, we want to Oop, see sometimes it does the incorrect movement uh, just have to click on it until you get the result you want uh, sometimes it's a little bit clunky um, in a visa if you hold down the shift key um, it will allow allow you to just move in one direction uh, but let's just um, move this one over here instead so as you can see we're slowly getting there and you just have to keep manipulating it. And uh, I won't get this absolutely perfect, uh, just for demonstration purposes. Um, I think we're fairly close to it. Um, so let's have a look. Um, it's sitting much more in a reasonable position that we would like. So let's uh, just stick with that one. So what we're going to do now is uh, resample the transformed image, um, which is where we do the re-slicing uh, according to the new um, grid on the global axes. You'll notice here, uh, just as an aside, uh, that the name of the data set here has been italicized um, for, from what it was when we loaded in, and that just indicates that it has been transformed. Okay. So let's attach this resample transformed image. Uh, you can either click it on the shortcut menu if it's there, otherwise right click on the actual data and let's do a search for it. So resample. Oop. And it should just be listed here as one of the options. I'm gonna choose uh, the interpolation method and uh, choose Langsos. Um, just be aware um, that uh, interpolation is changing your data, okay, which may be important for the particular project that you're working on. Uh, you're effectively remapping all the grayscale values uh, from the previous grid onto a new grid, and so you're recalculating uh, the gray level uh, values for each voxel in the image. Uh, so just be aware of that, uh, that is altering the data. Um, always choose this extended option uh, as uh, the bounding box, if you keep it the same, uh, then it will tend to crop off uh, regions of interest that might be relevant to you. So choose the extended version. It'll make uh, the data set larger uh, to begin with, but we can crop that down at the end. Okay, so let's apply that now. And it's going to uh, resample the image and spit out the, the new version. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, because this is a fairly um, downsampled data set and this computer is reasonably powerful. Okay, so here's the new data set that's been created um, and if we want to take a look at this, I'm going, to do, I'm going to turn off the transform editor, just go back here and click that box to get rid of the, the toggle box and I'll turn off this uh, volume rendering and the ortho slice. Okay, and we're now going to attach a volume rendering to the new data set. Okay. And we're going to adjust those sliders again to visualize it the way we want. Okay. Last time I peeled it away a bit too far, so let's just leave it there so we can see the, the head a bit more. And you'll see that if we put um, an ortho slice onto this data, it's been sliced according to this new orientation. It's not quite perfect, but that's fine. You can attach more of these ortho slices if you like. Um, we'll change this next one, for example, uh, to the XZ orientation, and we can see that we've cut it through uh, that way as well. Okay. So, as I mentioned, uh, the data set will be larger uh, than it was previously. If we put uh, a bounding box uh, onto this, you can see that it's quite a large bounding box uh, surrounding the sample uh, compared to the original. Uh, so we put a bounding box here. Uh, you can see that was the original data volume, so it's made it quite a lot larger. 
Right, so let's turn those bounding boxes off and uh, let's now do a crop. Okay. So to crop the image, uh, we're going to simply attach um, an extract subvolume. So if you just search for that, uh, extract subvolume, what we end up with is this uh, blue cornered box um, that we can move and simply drag the extremities of the box to the new position that you want being careful not to crop off any data that you might want to keep. Okay, you can do this again using these different views, so you can look directly down the data set. It's a little bit um, degraded, uh, the scan quality at that very end there wasn't very good, so I might crop that off as well. And then just do a final check, make sure that you've got uh, it visible uh, and contained within that, uh, that sub-volume and then just simply click apply and it'll throw out another data set and it's up to you which ones of these you save I would simply be saving this finalized one here uh, so again if we uh, just quickly go to edit adjust uh, sorry options uh, auto adjust range on this volume render um, get it to uh, turn off the auto adjust range um, so that when I drag this it doesn't just uh, change it back to the original uh, rendering and so it keeps the same rendering and let's delete the extract sub volume so there we have it we have uh, turtle data now sliced and resized according to a more sensible anatomical uh, position if you like but just be wary of that um, interpolation that you're that you're doing okay um, so let's just quickly put uh, the ortho slices on to this particular data set final data set to have a look um, adjust the positions and you can as I say put one in the um, in the other plane if you like uh, let's do that now ortho slice and put that in the third view and so as you can see we now have this sliced in a meaningful way okay so that's um that's it as i say it's uh, fairly straightforward in aviso uh, so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, i'll catch you next time cheers